how to use God's given resources. What is God's standard? What does God measure us, our success or failure? How does God measure? I mean, you can certainly focus on to be famous, but even that doesn't last on this side of the world, right? I mean, look at Tiger Woods. His fame is gone down the drain. What is it that that brought him down? I mean, I can name everybody, anybody in the whole wide world. And that's not what our God will measure us. God will not ask you when you stand in the presence of Jesus Christ, He will not ask you how many houses did you have, how many rental income did you, how many great children do you have, nothing at all. What will He ask you? How did you? You see, we are commanded to go forth, make all disciples of all nations. And in order to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to anybody is through our words and actions, right? In order for us to do that very well, and it always boils down to how much you love God. You see, when you love God and you love others as yourself, then you will serve like God. You will serve like Jesus with a humble heart. You will serve not expecting anything in return. That's what's going to be measured. That's when Jesus says what? Well, well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful to a little thing, so I give you promotion. Come on in. I give you a bigger one. And also, I invite you into my cell room. Come and join the party. You see, that's what God's going to measure. And, by the way, the research tells us that if you give your life uh, away, you live longer. Uh, you give out, give away your talents and your gifts, and you being selfless, and then you gonna live longer and healthier. And I'm not saying it. The study shows, and it says when you we are all selfish, yeah? but when we fall that selfishness for a second. When we serve, like a homeless shelter, um, the, the Thanksgiving meal, and uh, the cooler hospital, when you do those things, what does it happen? Your heart is warm. You feel good about it, right? That the scientist says that the uh, member, um, the researcher said that it creates now the words that I don't know how to pronounce uh, and dolphins. Endorphins or endorphins? What is it? So, endorphins, endorphins, right? Endorphins. That lower your blood pressure and boost your immunity. You see, that's why you live longer, healthier when you give out your life, when you serve others. So, have you been served? Have you been serving? I mean, not only in the church, but also in the community, also in the senior citizens, whatever. Have you given your life away? Have you given your money away selflessly? Have you given your time away selflessly, not expecting anything? And you serve like a Christ, Jesus. You don't get upset if nobody pat on your back. You don't drop the things. You don't get mad if somebody challenges you. Hmm? Have you served? What did you do? Jesus is going to say. 
I have given you this power, I have given you this money, I have given you time, and he said, what have you done? If you will use it all for yourself, God going to say, that's wrong answer, right? God, I use it for my family, I took care of them, and my relatives, that's the wrong answer. God gave you all those cards and money and all that for you to use it for others. That's not going to be easy. But when you do that, when you focus on trying to meet God's standards, then you will. And you see, I am busy. I know you are busy. God says that he knows that you are busy. But he says, well, get rid of some activities to have uh, some time, more time for God. Cut down your expenses to give God more so that he can reach out to the needs of others. That's when when you focus, when you uh, try to meet God's standards, and the world's standards are not going to uh, be matter to you at all, and you focus, that's how you get rid of envy, envious in your heart. That's the last antidote that we are going to talk about this morning. Is what? Try to meet God's standard. Amen? Amen. You know, the one thing that I want to make sure that you got it is that envy is not something we wish to have or something that we dream about to have, something we made a goal to have. Even something that we cannot have, we wish to have. Even that, we can think of that, but when we dwell on it, wish to have something that doesn't belong to me. We can be challenged, tempted, but if when we dwell on it, that's when it gets problem, right? And when we, that's when it is become the sin of envy. Tempted is no problem. If you know how to overcome, no problem. But you give in to temptation, you give in to, so, wishing for somebody to fall. You do anything to get it. You forget about the laws and regulations and you do your integrity. Nothing is in the way for you to get it. That's what envy does. Right? And you wish someone to fall flat on their face. That's what you're saying? That's a mean evil. Right? It's a crazy. So we hear it inside. Who wants to say it? No. We recognize that is ugly emotion that is really <coughs> no good. So we hide it. That's why it eats you up inside. It eats you alive. But praise God. There is the antidotes, right? The antidotes are first, rejoice over God's grace onto others as if it happened to you. It can happen to you when you love your others as yourself, right? And the second one was, trust God's plan for your life. He has a greater plan for your life, greater things yet to come than you can anticipate. Right? And the third, try to meet God's standard so that you can hear the Lord God says what? Well done, my good and faithful servant. You see? When you follow through God's GPS, rather than world's GPS, you will have a peace in your heart. And that gives 
bone that gives life to the bones. That's how you gotta be looking good and younger and healthier. Got it? So God GPS is your equal to your botox. Got it. Got it. Let us pray.